Please rise. God is our refuge and our strength, a helper who can always be found in times of trouble. Here again, words written for us in 1 John chapter 4. God is love. Whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. In this way, his love has been brought to its goal among us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are just like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but complete love drives out fear. We love because he first loved us. You may be seated. Beloved in the Lord, my gardening book suggested that along with those juicy pea pods, we should eat the tops of our pea plants. Unfortunately, while we were on vacation, somebody beat us to the top of those pea plants. Short fences and an empty yard and house aren't going to keep the deer out of the garden. They always seem to find a way in. In fact, we have netting all the way around our orchard, and yet they found the one place under our daughter's treehouse where they can fit their antlers through to eat the tips of all the fresh leaves off of our fruit trees. If you may have noticed, they've even started to work on the deer-proof landscaping that we worked on last summer. We need to get those deer out of here. But it's easier said than done. And of course, deer aren't the only pests that we homeowners want to get rid of. Squirrels do more than eat your expensive bird seed, but they dig up your gardens, they build their nests in your eaves, they've even been known to knock out the power by shorting the system. The rats and mice get into all sorts of places where you never want them. They eat the things that they're not supposed to eat. They chew on wires. They build their nests. They carry diseases. As we speak, the jays and the starlings are probably nibbing, nibbling on the cherries that aren't quite ripe on the cherry tree right behind this wall. And it doesn't matter how many times we chase them away. As chicken keepers... It isn't just those type of pests, but raccoons, hawks, evil, eagles, skunks, cats, dogs, foxes, coyotes, bobcats, and cougars are all pests we need to keep out of our yard. And so we put up fences and nets, set traps, make bird feeders squirrel-proof, batten down the hatches of the coop to try to keep those pests out of the places where they just should not be. A different pest assails us all. This pest entered into the Garden of Eden as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, and it has nagged humanity ever since. This pest is always lurking, but sometimes it moves right in and becomes an infestation. Right now, over this last year, this pest has built its nest in our society and even in our own hearts and minds. Fear is a pest that destroys and infects everywhere it goes. Fear destroys relationships. Fear keeps us from living our lives. Fear stops us from showing compassion to those in near need fear chews on our joy fear kills our confidence and digs it up and leaves it cast aside fear erodes and bites through our connection with god and so john today tells us something quite remarkable one of the reasons that jesus came to complete his work was to drive out fear he says, complete love drives out fear. And so today with John, we ask God to get fear out of here. Get it out of here by his perfect love. Get it out of our love for one another. 
Today marks a shift in the church's calendar. From Advent to Trinity, the church focuses on what God has done for our salvation. As John puts it, we have also come to know and to trust the love God has for us. We have come to know how God took on flesh, how he lived among us, how he suffered and died for us, and how he was raised again to give us life and salvation. We have come to know that God is love. And now, from this Sunday until Advent returns, the the church shifts its focus just slightly, always keeping its eye firmly on Jesus we begin to consider how this love of God changes our lives and the way we love one another. In Christ, we now know and have experienced and can fully trust that this is true. God is love. We who believe have a direct connection to God's love. It feeds our hearts. It sustains our souls. It comforts our minds. It fuels our lives. And God's love is so that whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. And God's love is never without purpose. It is never without effect on those who remain in his love. In this way, His love has been brought to its goal among us so that we have confidence on the day of judgment. The goal of God's love was and has always been that we would be able to stand before him, walk in his presence, bask in his love, even as Christ Jesus, who has ascended to God's right hand, does so right now because in this world we are just like Jesus. John says we are like the one who lived a righteous life, who died in innocent death and has now been raised to life for our justification so that in Christ you have been declared righteous. In baptism into Christ's name you have died with him to be raised to new life so that in Christ you know God's love now and especially even more so on that day of judgment. That's what it means to live in God's love, to remain in God's love, to experience that God's love has been brought to its goal. And so John says, there is no fear in love, but complete love drives out fear. Complete love is love that has perfectly achieved its goal. It is God's love. Because fear has to do with punishment and our punishment has been taken away. Therefore, we have nothing to fear. And the one who continues to be afraid has not been brought to the goal of love. The rich man from Jesus' story had his own goals. He wanted to gather possessions and live lavishly every day. He didn't give God much of a second thought. He ignored the words of Jeremiah that we also heard this morning saying that the Lord delights in mercy and justice and righteousness on earth. He pretended he didn't see the beggar Lazarus in his misery. He didn't listen to God's calls to repent. You see, those would all get in the way of his goal. Taking care of a poor beggar is such a downer when all you want to do is have a good and easy life. He feared anything that would take away from the life he wanted to live. And at the end of his life, his ultimate fear was truly realized. And this time realized forever. His good things were all taken away. No more comfort remained for him. Our goals influence our fears. And our fears often show us our goals. When we fear and worry about laws and the government, is our goal worldly power, ease, temporary freedom, 
If we fear inflation and fluctuating markets and job security is the goal of our life, wealth and a comfortable retirement. If we fear, per, if we perpetually live in fear over our health is our goal a long life. The impossible goal of a world without sickness or risk when we are afraid of what others might think of us, what they might say about us, is our goal popularity or the approval of the world around us? If we fear making a mistake, making the wrong choice, saying or doing the wrong thing, is our goal to be able to justify ourselves to be right, whether it's in our own eyes in the eyes of the world, or in the eyes of God. And certainly we want to use our wisdom, our rationality that the Lord has given us to do the best with all the gifts of God, our possessions and our lives. But if we make our decisions because of fear, any fear, we are not living in love. We are not living by faith, God has a goal. You likely have it memorized. For John has told us God's goal through the words of Jesus himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That was God's goal from the beginning of all time. That was God's goal before fear entered into the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve sinned. It was God's goal in this love that worked in all of history. It is the goal of his love that caused the incarnation of God's Son to be born as a human baby. You see, Jesus is God's love in the flesh. God's love was the work of his hands. God's love suffered for those who hated him. God's love was nailed to the cross. God's love rose again on the third day. And so God's love declares that your sins are all forgiven. God's love has ascended to the right hand of God to rule all things for the good of his church and to bring you to the goal of God's love. This love of God reaches the goal when you come into his presence and stand there with joy and love in your hearts and that you will live in that joy and that love forever. That is the goal of God's love. And it is that love of God, that complete love of God that truly drives out all fear. What can make you afraid when God is working toward his goals for you? How can we fear for our earthly goods, even our earthly lives, when God has secured eternal life for you? How can we ever let anything creep between us and God when God's love has been completed for you in Christ? You see, God's love isn't a concept. It isn't a feeling. It isn't wishful thinking. It isn't a mantra or some mind trick that we play for ourselves to control our fears so that we can be confident in this world. No, God's love is a reality in Christ. And so John doesn't say that you will never have reason to be afraid. But rather, he never says that you have nothing to be afraid of. The things we fear are often very real and very dangerous. Rather, John says, complete love drives out all fear. So when we are afraid, when this life is frightening and uncertain, we have the power to get that fear out of here, and here, and here, and here. We have God's complete love the work of the Father who created you, the work of the Son who redeemed you, the work of the Holy Spirit who has called you by name and sanctified and keeps you to the very end. 
It will always drive away fear because that is God's goal. And his goal is that love reaches its goal in you. One of the reasons John wrote this letter to the churches is because some who were coming to faith in this new religion of Christ were looking at the free grace of God and coming to the conclusion that what they did didn't really matter. They belong to Christ who sits on the right hand of God. So who cares about things here on earth? They were spiritual. So who cares about the physical? They had this new, exciting, brand new and un and secret knowledge. So who cares about the dull, boring, tedious work on earth? As long as they had the right religion, why worry about anything else? John responds quite simply, look at God. He doesn't just love you spiritually and eternally, though he does do that, but God loves you entirely, physically, emotionally, and in every moment of your life. And John says, we love because God first loves us. And so this is what it means to live as a Christian to love. So if anyone says, I love God but hates his brother, he is a liar. For how can anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen love God whom he has not seen? Our words and thoughts and feelings mean nothing, but God's love has changed us. And the clearest evidence of that change within us is going to be in our actions towards one another. This is the command we have from him. The one who loves God should also love his brother. How can we love God if we do not listen and obey one of his clearest commands to us? As a kid at camp, we would always sing the song, There's a Hole in the Bucket. Where Henry complains about the hole in his bucket to Liza who offers him the solution to fix it. But after all of her solutions, Henry offers another excuse for why he can't get it done. And where it all comes back around is, there's a hole in my bucket. There's always an obstacle, but it always starts and stops with that hole. John, in these words, condemns an unloving heart in the strongest way. Those who do not love out of selfishness, laziness, hatred, or lack of compassion, they cannot say they love God. They lie to themselves. They lie to the world. They try to lie to God himself. But er, they don't even have a bucket in which to carry their love. But I think for a lot of us, often we find there's a hole in our bucket. Fear is the hole in our bucket. And it is what love drains out of. We fear we will do the wrong thing, so we do nothing. We fear being vulnerable, uncomfortable, or awkward, so we keep to ourselves. We fear losing the things that we love so much. We fear that we will lack and so we are afraid to give. We fear we won't be recognized, rewarded, or praised for what we do. We fear that we will run out of energy for all the things that we want to accomplish. We fear that our love might even put ourselves at risk. We fear that it won't do any good anyways. That our love will simply be wasted. We fear that speaking the truth of God about sin and about heaven and hell and God's grace, well, it might make someone angry. It might damage a relationship that we value. We fear. We fear and we won't carry our love very far with the fear draining it out of our hearts. That's why John doesn't start 
with us. He doesn't tell you how good love will feel. He doesn't tell you how admirable love will be or even that you will be rewarded for your love. Rather, he says, we love because he first loved us. Jesus was mocked and crucified for his love. His love was rejected even when he rose from the dead. But Jesus was not afraid to come into the world and love us. We love because he first loved us. And so we know God's love is complete. God's love never fails, never lacks, never misses. It will never be taken away. We will never miss out on any blessing that God desires for you, that God plans for your good. Our reward is secure, no matter what we experience here on earth. And so we don't need the notice of anyone or even the angels in heaven, for God never loses sight of his children. And so, get fear out of your love for one another. Love each other. Love each other boldly. Love each other fully. Love each other through all troubles and hard times because complete love drives out fear. And when we love as God has loved us, because God has first loved us. We find that we are ever drawn closer to Christ because love comes from God. And then we will see, and perhaps others will even notice the truth of these words. In this world, we are just like Jesus. As gardeners, homeowners, and chicken keepers, we will sometimes take extreme measures to keep the pests out of our yards. High fences, Nerf guns, motion-detecting sprinkler systems, traps, cats, impenetrable coops, and even perhaps a guard goose. As Christians, we don't need to take extraordinary measures to get fear out of our lives. No, we look to Jesus. We concentrate on God's complete love. We remain in that love. We live in that love. And that love gets fear out of here. Today and forevermore. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.